Hello and welcome to our nightly news program coming to you live on All24 News here from Algiers. Next are the headlines. After an absence of 12 years, Syria officially regains its seat in the League of Arab States Council. Damascus welcomes and calls for a joint and effective Arab approach based on mutual respect during the next day. Also coming up on the anniversary of May 8th massacres, 1945, President Taboon affirms the determination of the Algerian state to put the file of history and memory on a path that gives transparency, integrity and objectivity away from any bargaining or concessions. Also ahead, President Taboon reveals actual steps to strengthen Algeria's presence in Africa. The International Cooperation Agency will start completing its first projects in Mali and Niger within a month. New sea lines to West Africa will be opened and the first Algerian bank will soon be inaugurated in Senegal. And clashes between the Sudanese army and the Rapid Support Forces enter the fourth week. Battles intensify in Khartoum with the start of talks in Saudi Arabia to extend the seventh truce and the number of civilian casualties reaches 500 dead. Hello again and welcome to the program. First off in our news, after an extraordinary meeting of the Arab League held in Cairo at the level of foreign ministers, the League of Arab States has decided to integrate Syria in the Arab League Council after more than a decade of suspension. In 2011, the Arab League suspended the participation of the Syrian delegation in the League's meetings and imposed economic sanctions on the country following the civil war. More with Osama Ayadi. Arab foreign ministers decided in an Arab League extraordinary meeting held in Cairo on Sunday to restore Syria's membership in the League after 12 years of suspension. The Arab League Council meeting at the ministerial level decided to resume the participation of delegations of the government of Syria in the meetings of the Arab League Council and all its organizations and bodies. Arab states have taken decision to resume the participation of the Syrian Arab Republic's delegation in the meetings of the Arab League and all associated organizations and bodies started today, May 7, 2023. The Arab foreign ministers also agreed on the necessity to intensify efforts to help Syria out of its crisis and commit to preserving Syria's sovereignty, territorial integrity, stability and regional integrity based on the Arab League Charter and its principles. I repeat the need for the Syrian government, political forces, national entities, the international community and concerned states to commit to each other. The foreign ministers also agreed to form a committee comprising Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Lebanon and Egypt and the Arab League Secretary General to continue direct dialogue with the Syrian government to reach a comprehensive solution to the Syrian crisis. The return of Syria is the beginning of a movement, not an end. The direction of the resolution to the crisis in Syria will take time for procedures to be implemented and it will be gradual. The last decision of the Arab League was some sort of relief after more than a decade of suspension and economic sanctions which followed the outbreak of armed conflict in the country. Recent years have seen an easing of relations between Syria and other Arab countries, with several other countries calling on the Arab League to restore Syria's membership. Still with the same story, the Syrian Foreign Ministry welcomed the decision of the League of Arab States, including restoring Damascus' seat in the organization. The Syrian Foreign Ministry stated that Damascus had received with interest the decision issued by the Council of the Arab League at the level of foreign ministers regarding the resumption of the participation of Syrian government delegations in the meetings of the Council of the League and all its affiliated organizations and agencies. The Syrian Foreign Ministry stressed the importance of dialogue and joint action to face the challenges facing Arab countries, considering that the next stage requires an effective Arab approach based on mutual respect.
In a different development, the European Union called on the Zionist entity to stop all demolitions and evictions, which will only increase the suffering of Palestinians and escalate an already intense environment. In a press statement, the European Union expressed its shock at the Zionist Occupation Authority's demolition of the Jebel Deb School funded by the European Union, which serves 60 children. The EU also said that the demolitions are illegal under international law and that children's right to education must be respected. We got ready to come to school and when we arrived we didn't find the school. We want a school today. We want to study. If they will keep demolishing, we will keep building. We want to study at our school. It was a nice school. We want another one. In Palestine still, the United Nations World Food Program announced on Sunday the suspension of its aid to more than 200,000 Palestinians in the Palestinian territories starting from next month due to an acute shortage of funding, a decision that would affect families in Gaza, which have the highest rates of food insecurity and poverty in the occupied territories, in addition to the siege of the Zionist entity on Palestinians. We prepared the table to eat cream cheese. They are starving. We did not cook. We are waiting for it. If they cut the voucher, we will starve to death. People may set fire to themselves or may jump off rooftops. When a child is asking for food and we can't find food, what should we do? God knows, I have nothing, not even a penny. I'm waiting for the voucher in a minute. Also, we are waiting for the local social help program. My husband is jobless. In his monthly briefing with national press and media representatives, the Algerian president, Abdel Majid Taboon, said that the Zionist violence and assaults on Al-Aqsa Mosque are unacceptable. The Algerian president also called on the Arab nations to be unified in order to face the regional challenges. Let's listen. <laughs> المسجد الأقصى يدنس بحضور جنود محتلين بسبابتهم في في المسجد الأقصى ولا واحد يحرك ساكن يعني شيء غير مقبول غير مقبول ما حتى نقولوا اللي نقولوا ما نقبلش من كان من رأى منكم منكرا فليغيره بيده فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه فمن يستطع بقلبه ووضع في الإيمان and in a different matter, Algerian President Abdel Majid Taboon expressed in a letter on the occasion of the commemoration of the National Day of Memory, commemorating the massacres of May 8th, 1945, the hope for progress in the near future on the issue of history and memory. This issue includes various aspects such as the recovery of archives, properties, remains of resistance fighters, nuclear tests, and missing individuals. President Taboon also emphasized on the importance of the work entrusted to the Joint Committee of Historians to address all of these issues with courage and fairness. He also affirmed that the Algerian government is firmly committed to defending the rights of its people and it's intensifying its efforts to address this sensitive issue transparently. We're looking forward to achieving significant progress in the near future and addressing the issues related to history and memory. The Joint Committee of Historians has been entrusted with the important task of tackling all aspects of this matter, including the recovery of archives, properties, remains of resistance fighters, nuclear tests, and missing individuals. We have reiterated our firm commitment to defending the rights of the Algerian people and we are intensifying our efforts to handle this sensitive issue with courage, fairness and transparency. Still with president activities, the Algerian president emphasized on the importance of the BRICS organization in helping Algeria in its development, stating that the BRICS banks have a significant share that exceeds 100 billion US dollars. البريكس منظمة البريكس تساعدنا في التنمية أكثر من ما ساعدونا إلى يومنا هذا كل مؤهيات المالية الدولية وهذه لا بنك تاع البريكس اليوم لا دوتاسيون تاعها في 100 مليار دولار أكثر من لا بنك مونديال وأكثر من أكثر 
وتمول المشاريع نتاعنا وندخلوا في التنظيم تاعهم والسياسيين كونوا منضمين لبعضنا بعض. Algerian president also said that Algeria renewed its efforts to strengthen its relationship with Africa and that Algeria has directed its efforts overseas and it has now decided to regain its rightful place in Africa. وقت فات ما افريقيا كانت يعني وجودنا في القاره فقط ما العمل تاعنا ما كانش متوجه لافريقيا منذ العشر سنوات الاخيره كان كل شيء متوجه ما وراء البحار اليوم رجعنا مكانتنا استرجعنا مكانتنا في افريقيا افريقيا انا قلتها الصحافه الاجنبيه وقلتها الصحفيين الجزائريين ان مثل ما يقال كاد الفقر ان يكون كفرا اليوم الفقر الشيء اللي موجود في افريقيا هو اللي خلى بعض الافارقه لعبه بسيطه بين ايادي الناس اللي احنا نحاول ندخل التنميه الى افريقيا وقلتها رئيس دوله غربيه قال قلت له احنا مهما كان الحال ثم مهتمين وحنا مهتمين اهتمامكم ما هوش اهتمامنا ثم اهتمامكم جيو سياسي و... وعسكري وكذا حنا اهتمامنا اخوي ونعرفوا بلي الناس هادو محتاجين مساعدتنا الاخويه ومحتاجين كذا Major General Said Shangriha, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, confirmed that Algeria has advocated for the adoption of a new African approach to counter terrorism during the 11th meeting of the Chiefs of Staff Committee and the 10th meeting of the Council of Ministers of Defense of the member states in the Northern African Regional Capability. Algeria has raised in order to adapt new African approaches related to combating terrorism based on fighting armed groups as well as preventing all forms of extremism. To a different matter now, activists coordinated with Sahrawi community associations organized a solidarity rally with the Sahrawi people in France on Sunday on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Sagi al-Hamra and Wadi Dahab. During the rally, hundreds of people gathered and chanted slogans and expressions of solidarity with the struggle of the Sahrawi people who decided to return to armed struggle after all attempts to end the conflict in the last colony in Africa had failed. Several participants in this solidarity rally expressed their unconditional support to the struggle of the Sahrawi people and their plight to independence and self-determination. To a different development in Africa still, the League of Arab States Council called on the Sudanese parties to give priority to the interest of the country and to seriously engage in negotiations in order to avoid the conflict escalating into a war that divides Sudan and threatens its territorial integrity. During a meeting of Arab foreign ministers on the developments in Sudan, the Secretary General of the Arab League of Arab States Council, Ahmed Abul Ghait, said that the Saudi American mediation initiative between the Sudanese army and the rapid support forces deserves support. As for the special envoy to the President of the Sudanese Sovereignty Council, he said that what is happening in his country is a coup attempt, warning of the scenario of fragmentation and division again. What happened is an ambition and a coup on the legitimacy to take power unjustifiably and is not supported by any logic. The disintegration of the Sudan is the disintegration of the territory and beyond. We call on the international community to understand that what is happening in Sudan is an internal matter. Representatives of the Sudanese army and the paramilitary rapid support forces have been in the Saudi coastal city of Jeddah for talks to discuss a potential ceasefire since Saturday as fighting and airstrikes in Khartoum continued leaving many residents trapped in their homes and others in shelters with little food, medicine and water. More details with Salman Nasseb. 
Fighting and airstrikes in Khartoum continued on Sunday in Sudan, which made representatives from the warring parties to set a meeting in Saudi Arabia for talks to discuss a potential ceasefire, as multiple ceasefires have been broken and not respected since a violent war broke out between the Sudanese army and the paramilitary rapid support forces. According to the League of Arab States, an urgent ministerial meeting was held in the Saudi coastal city of Jeddah, where a committee was will be formed to communicate with Sudan's warring parties and the international community on reaching a ceasefire agreement. And on the same occasion, the committee announced during the meeting is set to include Egypt, Saudi Arabia and the Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abu Ghait. The two resolutions were adopted today, including one on Sudan. One of the main points of this resolution is to form a committee to follow up and communicate from the side of Egypt, Saudi Arabia and the Secretary General in order to communicate with the warring parties and the international community, as it appears in the aforementioned resolution on Sudan. The first serious ceasefire initiative was organized by the Saudi Arabia and the U.S. to end fighting between the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces that has turned parts of the Sudanese capital into war zones, derailed an internationally backed plan following years of unrest and uprisings and eventually created a humanitarian crisis. The U.S.-Saudi ceasefire initiative to launch indirect talks between Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces in Jeddah to reach a ceasefire agreement really deserves our support. I repeat my appeal to uphold this opportunity and to put forward the interests of the country above anything else and to also engage in the talks in a way that brings stability to Sudan and preserves the national institutions from collapse as well as preserving its sovereignty. Meanwhile, the UN's top humanitarian official Martin Griffiths was also part of the ministerial meeting as he arrived to Jeddah for talks aiming for a ceasefire. And according to Eric Conico, public information officer, the UN's purpose visit is to engage in humanitarian issues related to Sudan. Last but not least, it's worth noting that the ceasefire meeting was quite crucial as the Sudanese doctors' union said the fighting had killed at least 700 people people, many of whom are civilians, wounded thousands and led to millions of Sudanese and foreigners fleeing the country. The Director General of the UN International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Grossi, has warned that the situation around the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is potentially dangerous and had become increasingly unpredictable. And in a statement on Sunday, Grossi called for measures to be taken to ensure the safe operation of the plant in order to prevent a dangerous nuclear accident that would have serious repercussions on the population and the environment. The general situation in the area near Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is becoming increasingly unpredictable and potential dangerous we must act now to prevent the threat of a severe nuclear accident and its associated consequences for the population and environment. Russia stages its annual Victory Day parade on Red Square on Tuesday amid particularly tight security after a series of drone attacks including on the Kremlin citadel, symbolic heart of the Russian state that Moscow has blamed on Ukraine. Victory Day is a key anniversary to evoke the spirit and sacrifice that helped the Soviet Union defeat Nazi Germany in 1945 to kindle Russian sense of patriotism, especially since the special military operation in Ukraine on February 24, 2022. But several Russian regions have already scaled back events, citing concerns that they could be targeted by pro-Ukrainian saboteurs. And in Moscow, there appear to be fewer military personnel and less military hardware involved in rehearsals for the parade, though residents wanted it to go ahead as always. I think we probably should hold the parade to boost patriotism in the people, as it's fluctuating now among the people due to the special military operation. In my opinion, we need to do the parade so that people know what our grand-grandfathers and our grandfathers and grandmothers went through, so that people would remember, as many begin to forget what May 9th is and what it stands for. During the World War II, 
are great patriotic war. Almost every year the parade was held at the Red Square, and it inspired people for victory. Why wouldn't we do it now? We must do this for sure. It's a big propaganda move, and it should be taken. Otherwise, there is no sense of what is being done in Ukraine without it. A Moldovan opposition movement protested in the capital's government district on Sunday, demanding the government and president to step down. Organized by politicians from the Seoul Party and the Bloc of Communists and Socialists, the protest took place a week after a leading figure in the long-running opposition protest was detained at Chisano Airport. Calling for the resignation of the pro-European government, Seoul Party's senior member Marina Tauber was detained on May 1st as she attempted to leave the country. The protest took place two days before some ex-Soviet countries marked the day of victory, celebrating Germany's defeat in World War II. To the United States now, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen on Sunday issued a stark warning that a failure by Congress to act on the debt ceiling could trigger a constitutional crisis that also would call into question the federal government's credit worthiness. Yellen sounded the alarm over possible financial market consequences if the debt ceiling is not raised. Uh, President Biden has invited, invited the leadership of Congress to the White House on Tuesday. I know he wants to set up a process. Uh, since 1960, the debt ceiling has been raised 78 times, uh, three times during the prior administration, always with bipartisan support. And it simply is unacceptable for Congress to threaten economic calamity for American households. Our priority is, is to make sure that Congress does its job. There is no way to protect um, our financial system and our economy other than Congress doing its job and raising the debt ceiling and enabling us to pay our bills. And we should not get to the point where we need to consider whether the president can go on uh, issuing debt. This would be a constitutional crisis. In the U.S. still, at least seven people were killed and several others were injured on Sunday when a car ran into pedestrians in Brownsville, Texas, and a male suspect was in custody. The crash occurred at 8.30 a.m. local time near Ozanaman Center, a shelter for migrants and homeless. Some migrants were among the dead. A number of people were injured in the crash as well. But there were no immediate further details. A video circulating online purporting to show the crash shows a speeding SUV plowing into a row of people sitting on a curb. A second video of the aftermath appears to show victims lying on the ground, some bloodied and writhing, while others lay motionless. Britain's heir to the throne, Prince William, said on Sunday he was so proud of his father, the newly crowned King Charles III. King Charles on Sunday said he was deeply touched by the celebration of his coronation, which continued with street parties ahead of a concert featuring singers like Lionel Richie, Katy Perry and Andrea Bocelli at Windsor Castle. More details with Sofiane Kinturi. The streets of East London were alive with excitement on Sunday, as dozens of people gathered to celebrate King Charles' coronation. People from all nationalities joined in the revelry, with street parties taking place across the area. Well, obviously there's a big difference between knowing someone's coming and actually seeing them here, and I've actually never seen Kate nor William in the flesh. Um, so I think we were honoured that actually they stood right in front of us and spent a long time talking to the people around us. And what's so lovely is that there were all these people, you know, gathering to meet them and showing their support for the, for the royalty. And I think that's what we need. The celebrations were not limited to London in Windsor. The Prince and Princess of Wales, William and Kate, were seen mixing the crowds and soaking up the festive atmosphere ahead of Grand Concert. For all its celebrations are magnificent, at the heart of the pageantry is a simple message, service. My father's first words on entering Westminster Abbey yesterday were a pledge of service. It was a pledge to continue to serve, 
because for over 50 years, in every corner of the UK, across the Commonwealth and around the world, he has dedicated himself to serve others, both current and future generations, and those whose memory must not be neglected. The concert, which was attended by a star-studded audience, including American singer Leona Ricci, saw Charles and Camilla take their place among the senior royals, while 20,000 jubilant fans cheered them on. King Charles and I are the same age, so when I say this to you, that I'm sure he has not been here before, and I have not been here before, so tonight is going to be one of those celebrations where we're actually going to see it and witness it together for the first time, and I must say, I'm stepping into history. Tonight is historic. As the night wore on, the joyous mood showed no signs of abating, with people from all walks of life coming together to celebrate the historic occasion. The coronation of King Charles might have been the reason for the festivities, but it was the shared sense of community and togetherness that truly made the day unforgettable. Well, that's all we have for now. For more, you can always visit our social media platforms. From me and the rest of the team, thank you for tuning in. Till next time, take care.